CP. Are you serious? He's gone. Fanny, Fanny, Thomas all the way. Touchdown, Redskins, 64 yards. 26 minutes. <laughs> he's pretty sharp, you know. He'll coach you up on the, the Miami guys and everything else. He's kind of he's kind of fun to be around. Got an opinion too. You know, I've been blessed to uh, had an opportunity to go out and be myself and say the things that I say. And you know, for the outside world, they can deal with it how they deal with it. 26 minutes with Clinton Portis, CP. Teach him something. Welcome to 26 minutes, episode number 25. Back in studio, Jake Crinch Rifles, Monica McNutt. We're back together again after I got the pleasure of going to Atlanta and doing this by myself for Super Bowl. <laughs> I miss you guys. That's what you get. That's the perks of being. It didn't the seem brand. like you missed it us. Did. You were around all these celebrities. Did, listen, if you asked Devontae, I I continuously gave you all the shots. You out. did. I heard that in the pod. See? That lets you know I was thinking about you. I was like, I was having to do this by myself. Me and Devontae, we were running around looking for people to talk to. It was like if Monica was here. This would be so easy. <laughs> and if Jake was here, he would know who these people actually are instead of us having to do research to find out who we're talking to. That's a concept. That's so, a concept. But the pods were really good. I really liked your conversation with Pac-Man. That was cool. I was like, wait, are they having like an Oprah moment here? We were. And you know what happened, Devontae? Uh, he just, I think he was in Atlanta enjoying himself. So he just let me do whatever I wanted to do. But <laughs> speaking of Atlanta Super Bowl recap, New England Patriots are our Super Bowl champions. Um, I I hate to say I told you so, but if you really listen to the podcast, I said the Patriots would win by 10 points. Me and Cooley were having an argument. I said the Patriots would win by 10 points. The way they would win this game was taking the edge away from the Rams, which they did. Uh, they made golf a pocket passer. Sonny Michelle, outstanding. Edelman, outstanding. Gronk, outstanding. But that defense, the Patriots' defense – they surprised me. They surprised me the most. Yeah. I think the whole storyline of that game was what happened to Todd Gurley because he started out and there was no talk the entire week that this guy was still having issues with his injury and it was going to be fine. And Sean McVay had a lot of ideas for him to put him out there right away and get him the ball. And end of the first quarter, into the whole second quarter, really, C.J. Anderson was the guy. And it didn't really, I mean, eventually Todd got back in there, but it just didn't have the same impact at all. So as much as defense was a story, obviously, by the Patriots, in the first half in particular, you had to give credit to the Rams' defense as well. And so I was like, oh, wow, are we in for a real, like, straight-up defensive low scoring? After all the buzz all year long about the high-scoring league and woo-woo-woo, like, it was a... 13 10 13 well, when you look at game. the Rams defense a guy that stepped up two guys really came to play uh along with Sue because you know you needed more that I mean along with Don. Donald so when you look at how disruptive Sue was and you look at how disruptive Fowler was these guys were they were playing at a at another level where the pay, uh Rams couldn't adjust was the middle of their defense, their linebackers, uh, mm -hmm. Littleton. You right, put him on Gronk, name? yeah. You put him yeah. on Gronk, and that, that's yeah, what happens. But, but just that underneath, when Edelman got got five routes he could run, and you're trying to cover him, you're taking one away, and all of a sudden he could spin back out or run straight up the field. That's hard to cover. And then there was a great game plan, a, a great game call by Josh McDaniels. Yeah. That was so let me ask you this though. We talk about the defense of the Patriots, which we gotta give their credit. But Brandon Cooks and I've never had a, a large man draped over me trying to catch a ball being a moving target. <laughs> but it looked to me Draw. twice oh, yeah. right. Like Draw. he had to he should have had those balls and then twice, I don't know. The what are you talking about the back of the end zone? And then the one on the sideline. The sideline is the one that is the most the drop. blatant for me. Yeah, that's the drop. The back of the end zone was just a good play okay. uh, by McCourt. That's just coming. a late pass. Yeah, the the ball was late because he was wide open. It's good deception. They had a busted by the coverage. Yeah. They had a busted coverage, but because they were playing quarters, McCourty was able to come from the backside because he had nothing holding him to make that play, which that turned out to be a huge play in this for game. Sure. Uh, honestly, because if the Rams make that touchdown, you never know what can happen. Right, but that that Cooks drop, it was a, it was probably the best pass of the night in my opinion. I mean, Brady's to well, Gronk no, was, the Brady to Brady Gronk that was pass. that was just as good. But I mean, for for the opportunity to tie the game, I mean, you're talking about he didn't have anybody touch that 
in terms of Patriots defenders on him at all. So it's tough. I just it, you 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 always see that go against the Patriots. Remember, I mean, Eli Manning, those two passes. It it always seemed like those were the those were the plays that really just killed the Patriots in the Super Bowl. This time they got a break and they took advantage of it. Speaking of Gronk, when you look at Gronk in the uh, parade, you know, <laughs> in their Super Bowl parade, it's like Gronk is on another level. Everybody else is trying to figure out, you know, what should I do? Should I take a picture? Should I pose? Should... And Gronk is, he got a, he had to have a playlist in his head. He had his own playlist. He got he got wine. He has a playlist going on. I don't know if he's selling off into the sunset thinking this is it for me. Maybe I come back. Maybe I enjoy this too much. But when you look at Gronk and a person that enjoy, even after the Super Bowl, you get a picture of him and Tom Brady in the W hanging out. And just his entire uh, persona, his personality, uh, and the way he carries himself, he's going to be grunk regardless. No matter what people are talking about, it's, it's kind of like Brady. Brady mm-hmm. is going to be Brady. Gronk is going to be Gronk. Can we, before we even get into Gronk, I have to just say, the, the parade itself was on Tuesday. So quick. 36 hours so quick. <laughs> after the Super Bowl. Boston, Boston is so used to doing I'm parades. Saying. Coordination, no problem. <laughs> We're doing a parade tomorrow. That's I mean, deal. it's incredible. Okay. But they, they got one three months ago for the Red Sox. Right. Uh, Let's do it again. We know exactly what we're doing. They don't even have to like look back into the records about what they did in previous attempts. So a fan posted <laughs> 17, 17 year old, twelve celebrations in his Man. lifetime. That's- six Boston, six uh, by the Patriots, six by the Red Sox, six by the Patriots. How awesome is that? As a seventeen-year-old kid, your ch- like your sports is imagine. ruined. You're, yeah, yeah, like I can't even imagine. My first parade was a Caps parade. I'll be 30 this year. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't went to a parade. I've been to a Phillies parade in 2008. That was that was my my one. But that that's about it. Oh no, I lied. Hurricane parade. Come I, on, man. I Act yeah. like you ain't had no success. Come on, like, man. You know what? It wasn't even. A success. You didn't go to the Saints parade. Your team? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to. I actually went to the playoff game leading up to that. I should have went to the Saints parade. If you saw how the Saints parted during Super Bowl, that's where I should have been. <laughs> I should have been in in New Orleans for the Super Bowl. Out in the streets partying with the Saints. Well, fans. nobody watched the game in New Orleans, apparently. Yeah, exactly. I shouldn't have <laughs> I watched the game. Him. I don't blame them. I mean, that was that was. T- I mean, I do blame them, but I don't blame them. That's your team. That's different. Everybody else can watch. But to your point about Gronk, um, I think that's why it works, though, right? Like the Be- Belichick, Brady, these guys are allowed to be themselves. But when it's time to win, everybody's win. locked in. Like, let's go. Do what we got to do. Totally agree. Uh, totally agree. Speaking of do what we got to do, Jake, take it away. Guys, extreme opportunity to win million dollars ahead. The extreme million scratcher could get you $10 million without you having to do anything extreme at all. The game has a $10 million top prize, a $1 million second prize, and over $256 million in total prizes in the entire game. All you have to do is head to your local lottery retailer. This game will make even the dullest winter day sparkle. You have 30 chances to win per ticket, and there are multipliers in the game, too. If you have a non-winning ticket, you can enter it into the final second chance drawing in April for a $1 million prize. So don't spend the day staring out your window or leafing through a magazine you've read a million times, Monica. (laughs) Should you check out Extreme Millions? That's an extremely easy question to answer. Are we going to have a read-off now? (laughs) First off, we got a basketball inside our own hour set. Oh, God. Uh, Jake. Monica is, is Miss Basketball. She is. This is a great segment to, I mean, just the bad news uh, for DC Sports. John Wall uh, already out for the season. Apparently, ruptures his Achilles at home, and he's out 12 more months. So that means he's out for next season as well. Um, we look at this situation, Monica. Bad news for the Wizards. It's awful. Uh, all, all, you know what's what's really bad is that this carried over from the off season. Mm-hmm. It was negative talk all off season. Then you get the partying and in his response, and all of a sudden you get the trade, and he gets injured and go on IR, and now he's out for another year. It. John is in a tough spot, and I think first, fans have to 
acknowledge that whoever your favorite athlete is, you're also talking about their life, their well-being. He's a new dad. This is just taxing. You mentioned all of those things. He's trying to navigate being a leader on that team and all of that, and now he's out, right? Like 12 months out from when he has the surgery. Same injury Boogie Cousins had. So one, you got to think about the conversation over his well-being. But I'm sure, too, at least for me, and I can be honest about this, if you are a leader of a squad and you look up and your squad seemingly looks better without you, that dynamic is crazy. Like, of course you're rooting for your team, and I am not. I don't subscribe to the idea that the Wizards are better without Wall. I think Brad is a different player. They have to play differently by necessity, and it has worked well. But you can't do it with a one superstar in the NBA today. So I don't even think they should get rid of John. But I think he has to – this is sort of an opportunity for him to solidify himself in terms of what he means to this team from a leadership standpoint. Um, after he gets himself together, like, is he going to be around? Is he going to still be talking to the young guys? Is he going to be involved? Like, will he even make himself available to the media? Not that he has to, but just to kind of allow people to go through this process with you could garner maybe a little bit more loyalty because now the buzz is like, you know, uh, last week Ted Leonsa said that he, Porter, or Bill would be moved before the trade deadline, would not be moved. So it, I, I don't know what the Wizards are going to do. On the one hand, you're thankful that Wall signed his deal, got his money up front, because this is a crazy injury. But on the other hand, you're trying to figure out what the Wizards are going to do to remain competitive. Last time I looked, they were like two games or two teams. I think Detroit and Miami are like ahead of them for the eighth spot. But well, speaking of being snake bin, you know, you go back to, to Gil. Gil signs mm -hmm. a big deal here, and everyone is excited. And then that situation come up, and, and Gil doesn't uh, get to play out his deal. And all of a sudden, you get John Wall. You lock John Wall in. The entire city is excited about having John Wall uh, and, and his folklore. Uh, can continue to grow. He could continue to grow. And all of a sudden, you get in this situation, as you said, no one ever knows what's going on off the field. You know, yep. you, you got a newborn, you become a dad, and all this trade rumor, and, and then all of a sudden the fans are torn uh, with who wants you and who wants to see you go, and you have to deal with that. Then you see your team have success without you. That plays into the back of your head. Like, am I really the, the problem? Like, mm -hmm. if if they play better with me, maybe they should move me. I've been in that position. I, I mean, I've been in that position of, of getting hurt, having things go on. You know, the kids were born, and all of a sudden I lose Sean T, and then I get hurt, like, back to back to back. And all of a sudden sports just become, like, an afterthought. Yeah. Like, it's not that I'm tired of having to recover. I don't want to go through this. Like, I don't want to deal with this. I already got my money. He locked in mm -hmm. for hundred over a hundred million. His shoe plus, deal. Yeah. He got a shoe deal mm -hmm. already. So having that same will, that same want. We saw it. We saw it with Derrick Rose, yeah. who injury, 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 mm -hmm. every boy wrote him off. And all of a sudden you see the resurgence. You see what Derrick Rose is doing in Minnesota and how he's coming back and making people say, Oh, Derrick Rose still have. But does John Wall have that same mentality to go out? And put in the work. That's the question. Will he avoid the club? Because to come back from this, you got to avoid the clubs. You got to get, like, your life changed focus, overnight. Yeah. Like, your focus is you got a, a year and a half grind that's totally about recovery, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff you got to cut out. A lot of people that, that the yes man and the buddies and uh, when it comes to women being around, you got to cut it out mm -hmm. because you have to be laser focused on, you know what, I'm going to come back better. Look at Boogie Cousins. Yep. Look at Boogie Cousins. Yeah. I I, in, I kind of look at this, and it's a different league, but it, it does seem somewhat similar to Carson Wentz, Nick Foles. Carson mm -hmm. Wentz, the last two years, goes down. Nick Foles rejuvenates the Eagles or keeps them going on this magical run, you know, and... I mean, now that situation is kind of getting a little dicey. I think he avoided his option. He's going to try free agency, and but it, it 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 just feels like there are those moments when you realize as a player, okay, there's something different now in the locker room without me. How it you, you, it forces you to do a lot of self reflection. For Remember, sure. there was a lot of controversy about Carson Wentz even recently. Some of his players talking about how he's hard to be approached, and that that stuff always happens when another person comes in or there's just your absence and then good things happen. You know, it's hard to really 
nail down what that is. And so right. then the questions become, you know, a little bit more personal. And I think that's what he's going to have to deal with a lot, too. I, for one, am rooting for John. But I think what he should do is maybe he takes the first four months of this, maybe the first six months of this. But I, everybody, he's got his own thing going on YouTube. Allow it to be documented what this process has been like, what it has meant to you. He's got his own AAU organizations based in the North Carolina area. Like, allow this to be not only a teachable moment for yourself, but for others. Similar to your conversation with Pac-Man, like how an athlete approaches adversity speaks so many volumes about who he is, but also sets an incredible example because of the platform that they have. Speaking of platforms, you look at uh, the NBA trade de uh, deadline coming up, and of course, the number one trade target available, Anthony Davis, uh, New Orleans Pelicans, and all the teams that want Anthony Davis, but he shuts the talk down. Say, so I go to the Lakers, the Clippers, the Bucks, and the Knicks. Those are the four teams that's in it. And when you look before we get to Anthony Davis as an asset, what this has caused when you look at the Lakers and what the Lakers were willing to offer. I saw a meme today where LeBron <laughs> told uh, his son, Brandon James, like, sorry, son, uh, <laughs> the, Pelicans. the Pelicans want you too. So it's kind of like he's, he's breaking the bad news to his son that he has to leave. But when you look at uh, the Lakers locker room and the separation, all of a sudden LeBron comes back uh, against the Pacers. They lose by 46. Everyone on the bench, no one is near LeBron. Uh, a couple players, Wagner, go now. No one is there to have, pick him up. And this Lakers locker room where everyone is here in the chatter, uh, how effective that is in sports as well. It's crazy, but I will credit those young guys, at least the sound bites that we've heard. And I don't know if I chalked that loss up straight to this, all the buzz swirling around trade rumors. Because you heard Koo say, you know, he's doing his best. Like, he said maybe I should just bird box it, just not to deal yeah. with it. <laughs> Ingram got a little bit agitated with the reporter that kind of added a late question I saw in an interview earlier today, and he's like, I just answered that. Like, I'm just going to be focused and play basketball and control what I can control. I can't imagine that. But on the other end, like, it is a business, right? Like, it's not about LeBron's loyalty to you, but you kind of knew, you've seen this guy move over the course of his career, even if they weren't yet NBA players. Like, you got to know that he's always calculating to put himself in the best position. And unless you're D-Wade to a degree, maybe Carmelo Anthony, even though he might be a case that's too far gone, there's very few guys that he would look out for before his ability to achieve success. It's well, just, just got to be hard to, like, be a player with LeBron, knowing that he needs another superstar on this team, and you're you're the foundational stopgap in some way. You're probably a piece in someone's game that's going to be moved eventually. And you're just feeling, I, okay, I, I'd like to build a connection with LeBron, but I also know he's not really interested in me long term. And mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, you got a lot of young assets when you look at Ingram and when you look at Kuzma. Uh, young I, assets I, to trade, yeah, right? I never, I never really understood ball. I never would have got rid of uh, the kid they sent to Brooklyn for, for ball. D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, I never would have got rid of D'Angelo Russell. You see, he uh, finally got the nod. But you got to remember what was going on when yeah, that happened. Yeah, with, with Nick. So I think for D'Angelo Russell, he needed to get out of L.A. But at the same time, when it comes to a player, I think he was so much better as a player. His upside was so much bigger than Lonzo Ball. I, I don't, I'm not a Lonzo Ball fan. I I'm don't not really either. understand this game. That To me, that trade was more about all that was happening, which I get. And at that point, the Lakers weren't in any major conversations, so it was, all right, whatever. So you're saying that you would like to see LeBron take this core and go win? Well, he can't take this core and go win. <laughs> I was go about win. to say that. Like, so. that's, I mean, we understand that, and I think the court understands that as well. And so they're looking at LeBron like you're LeBron James. You're supposed to be able to win with anyone. Those those guys don't want to leave L.A. Like I'm sure they don't want to leave L.A. and go to New Orleans. Although New Orleans is New a Orleans, great city, yeah, it's a good spot. they don't. You know, when you're talking about ten guys on one plane flying from uh, L.A. to to New Orleans and having to regather the access they have in L.A. You're bigger than life in L.A. You kind of go to New Orleans. And people forget about you. you but know? most of the guys, I think, other than KCP, I think he might be like 26, 27. 
he, I feel like he's my age. But anyway, most of those guys are like 23, 22. You know what I mean? So they have a lot to a lot of NBA career left. Sure, this is a little bit uncomfortable, but I would like to believe that they'll have a relationship with LeBron other than just being his teammate, possibly. And you never know how that could go down the road. I don't think so. But when you look at uh, the <laughs> lucky Jake, Jake being a Philadelphia fan, <laughs> the Sixers pull off a trade overnight that shocks everyone uh, and bring in Tobias Harris and, mm -hmm. and Bojan. And Boban. 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 <laughs> Boban. Yeah, I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> Boban. Yeah. I, I like it. I think uh, I, it's funny when the when the Sixers got rid of um, – the, uh, who, who am I thinking of now? When they got for for Jimmy Butler, uh, Covington, Covington, and, um, and uh, that? now I'm now I'm blanking. Me too. They kind of got Sarge. over on that dude. So, there you go. but Dario, but it was like the Philly fans really. They I mean they just love all, all these players on this team, and especially they were really part of this you know rebuilding process. And so I think Shamit was even part of that just because he was drafted. And he's a young guy that's starting to look like going to be a sharpshooter in this league eventually. And so it's always hard to leave those guys because you feel like they're, they're people that were really impacted by this whole process, right? right. And I, I think, though, that this is, this is what the process is about. It's, it's getting young assets, trading them away, and building your roster to be as effective as it possibly can in, in Eastern Conference, which now looks – really like a pretty good shot for them. I mean, they lost to Toronto last night, but I, I, again, I think this is But you a, look at the powers of the East. You think the Sixers got enough to overtake Toronto or Milwaukee, yeah, Milwaukee or Boston. Same. Like, those are the four powers in the East all of a sudden that LeBron has went to the West. I think Boston isn't going to pan out the way we thought it would. Something's funny up I there. I think Boston going to make a move. You They've do? been too quiet. If they get a center, like this is their missing piece. It's just a center. They just need a big man that can give minutes so Horford can slide to power forward. But I feel like Tatum and those guys aren't having the year they had last mm -hmm. year. So, I, you know what I mean? Like it was Kyrie. And maybe, you yeah, like, I, I, what, did you, what were your thoughts on that when Kyrie said, ask me July 1? Well, I, I think Kyrie, for one, in Cleveland, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't appreciate Kyrie the way that I appreciated him when he made the move to Boston. All of a sudden, when he made the move to Boston, you saw Kyrie Kyrie. Right. Um, and, and I love his game now. But when I think his frustration, you know, I think his frustration is with himself because he thought he was a leader that maybe he's not ready for. And, and it seems easy when you're that talented that guys are just going to fall in line and get behind you. But when you have a personality like Rogier or you have uh, uh, guys with that hunger, that desire, that passion, that, that hardcore uh, player, Smart, yeah, guys. Marcus mm -hmm. Smart, it's kind of hard to get those guys yeah. to follow when they feel like this is my opportunity too. So I think that's what divided that locker room. Jason Tatum, one of those guys, is kind of passive aggressive. Like he's like anything. He's just cool. Uh, Hortford, he's just cool. You know, Morris is probably the muscle uh, on that team, and I, I'm sure Kyrie can't say, "Hey, Mark, uh, you know, Morris, get over here and do this." And he's like, who, who the hell are you talking to? <laughs> like, you get over there and do it. So. Uh, it's a lot to go with that locker room, and I just don't see Kyrie having a dominating personality to control those guys. Mm. Yeah. The, the leadership is tough. It's but definitely it tough. Speaking of control, um, stick with us on 26 Minutes as uh, my interview with Christine Leahy will be popping up on 26 Minutes. And right now, I'm controlling Jake to hand over the reins. <laughs> hand over the reins. Let's see who wins this. All right, we got a battle. true battle off because this is, uh, we, I got one read, you got one read. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> ha! Let me tell you a little bit about our friends at your local D.C. area Meineke Car Care Centers. It's a great place to, for everything you need to get done for your car on the road. It's so important to maintain your car, and there are 19 Meineke Car Care locations in the greater Washington, D.C. area to help you do so. So, is car care repair on your holiday shopping list? With services from oil change to brake repair, the experts at Meineke have you covered. Right now, get a basic oil change for only $19.95. Go in today or save time by booking online at Meineke.com. Meineke, on with life. Now, a oh, Jake! <laughs> a true, I did have a little error. A true, a true pro would have seen holiday shopping list was in an edit, probably an edit, true. and wouldn't have said that. You're right. So, we'll see if I can uh, up you here, <laughs> guys. Did you know that helping people improve their lives is what should drive business? 
That's the belief at Coke Industries, which employs more than 65,000 people across America. The team at Coke works together to meet the world's changing needs in transportation, medical care, water filtration, household goods, energy efficient building products, and everyday technologies, all while consuming fewer resources. See the innovations <laughs> firsthand at kochindustries.com. I love it. Monica can't go there on her phone because she forgot it today. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I enjoy this, um, well, Jake. We're going to leave this out for a debate. <laughs> this is going to continue on 26 minutes. Probably the hottest topic we got. <laughs> who's, who's the best at paying the bills? Are uninvited pests ruining your plans? Let PMSI, the pest control partner of the Washington Redskins, handle it for you. Call today for your free inspection, and they'll work around your schedule to provide you the best solution possible to defend your home territory against pests of all kinds, including mold. Visit MyPMSI.com for the game plan to control the pests on your home turf. That's MyPMSI.com. This is Rick Goslin with the Talk of Fame Network. This NFL season, FanDuel has more ways to win than ever before. New Beat the Score contests pay out everyone who hits a certain score. Now it's easy to find your friends and challenge them to play head-to-head fantasy contests for cash or bragging rights. New players, try FanDuel today and get a $20 bonus when you make your first deposit. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Rick. New users only. Bonus not available for withdrawal. State and age restrictions apply. For eligibility rules, terms, and conditions, go to FanDuel.com. John Riggins here with a little tip. If you need a mortgage, take my advice and use the pros at McLean Mortgage. Buying a home can be stressful and filled with hassles. The experts at McLean Mortgage understand what an important financial investment your home is and will seamlessly guide you through the process to successful home ownership. Smooth, amazing, easy, professional, and first rate are just some of the reviews from their tens of thousands of homeowners, including me. I trust McLean Mortgage, and I hope you will too. Check them out at McLeanMortgage.com. Hail to the Redskins this year with gear from the official Redskins team store. From Nike player and personalized jerseys to a great selection of new era hats, the Redskins team store has you covered. Plus, we have an amazing variety of youth and ladies apparel and everything you need to throw the perfect tailgate party. And we have signs, flags, and collectibles for the perfect Redskins man cave. So hail to the Redskins in style at any of our four Redskins team stores or online anytime at RedskinsTeamStore.com. I'm trying to meet that boy Clint Porter's though. They say that boy that they say he's smooth on his feet. I'm trying to teach him something. Teach him something. Teach him something. Uh, right now we have Monica's favorite segment. All oh, this show is about Monica, but we just are excited to <laughs> I have I love Monica you guys. Here. So, um, best thing we saw this week. All right, so I'm going away from sports altogether. Best thing I read, didn't see it. Get the alert on my computer. A runner kills mountain lion in self-defense in Colorado. Did y'all see that? Wow, I did not see that. Apparently, this gentleman's running in the beautiful mountains of Colorado. Uh, 80-pound mountain lion attacks him. From, he turns around, mountain lion attacks him. It was under a year old. Okay. Bit his face. Bites his wrists, but he kills it because How? in survival he suffocated it. Wow! Right? That's intense. That's, That's so intense. Flight or fight? Fight for one thousand and your life, Alex. Mm. Wow! Um, my best thing is a streaming uh, recommendation. Nice. Once again, new TV show on Netflix. It's called Russian Doll. Hmm. It is with Natasha Lyonne, who's from Orange Is the New Black and American Pie, the movies. She has, it's basically a Groundhog Day-esque kind of TV show. It takes place in New York City. And so she continually wakes up in the bathroom at her birthday party and keeps dying. And she's got to figure out a way to break the cycle. Wasn't that a movie? It's also a movie, uh, Happy Death Day. I yes, that's what I'm thinking of. This is a much better why, uh, why the name? Of that. What, what's the cr- Russian doll? I, I think I'm not exactly sure, okay. but it does represent kind of a, a layered, you know, the Russian, Russian dolls are, they doll. They have a bunch of little lives inside of them. So. I must say, so far your recommendations have been, if not enjoyable, at least thought provoking. Yes. <laughs> well, I haven't gotten the opportunity to check out any of them. Can you, can you just write it down on the back? I'll write it down for you. <laughs> Since now I finally Jake's have free time to come, you know, to come up and breathe uh, now. But the best thing I saw, so. This used to be a huge day in sports, right? It's National Signing Day, people. 
It's National Signing Day, and no one is talking about it because you have the early signing period. You have all this portal and everything else. But my team, the University of Miami, although we don't have a top 10 signing class, we have valuable pieces. Now, we went out, and Manny Diaz used the portal to bring in guys that were, I mean, in the transfer portal coming from other schools, which – it's great because you bring in some guys with experience to the University of Miami. But if anyone has watched the University of Miami uh, over the recent years, notable struggles. Our punter was probably the worst punter in college football. Like, he shanks at, at the worst time possible. <laughs> he kick a, a five-yard kick. It might just go lateral out of bounds from where he kicked it from. So Miami goes out and find a kicker from a JUCO who's – he, he got to be at least 30. <laughs> this guy got to be at least 30. If anyone has seen him, seen him. his name is, is Lewis Headley, and this guy is fully tatted <laughs> from his neck to his wrist, all right? And he's ripped. This guy is rocked. And Miami – Signs him on National Signing Day. To a lot of people, a punter signing goes overlooked. To me, it's the <laughs> best signing that the universe – because now you think of our punter. It gives you an opportunity to flip the field. It gives your guys an opportunity to go down to cover. You have one of the better defenses in college football. It puts them on the field. Instead of them having to stop a team from going 35 yards to get a touchdown or 40 yards to get a touchdown, now you have to work 80 75, 70 yards. And I like our defense when they have the opportunity to get – to not give up a 30-yard touchdown off of one play. I right. really like our defense. Monica, you know the state of Miami football is – Tenuous? Tenuous. <laughs> when Clinton Portis goes on his own podcast and <laughs> says he's excited about a punter. Listen, Listen, I'm excited for you, though. I saw that kid. <laughs> have you saw this Have you seen Jake? him? Yeah, you got to see him. I haven't. I'm Listen. like, he looks like he fits the U vibe. Fits, yeah, it fits the U vibe. He looked like he should have been on Miami Vice. <laughs> he has to he's be 30. He's intense. I don't know. Man, he got to be. He's definitely 25. He's he's not 21 or 22. He's older. He's, a little, he's got a little seasoning on him. No, he's definitely 25. He looked like he did time. That's what it looked like. It looked like he just got out of the joint. So, real quick, before we throw to your interview with Leahy, we actually had a chance to check you out on her show. What's her show called? What's her show called? Um, that know. thing in California. My bad. We watched the, or I watched the YouTube clip. One, you were so, like, chill. I was like, is that our co-host? He's so, like, chill. <laughs> always chill. You was, like, sitting in the couch, like, you know, real low key. You did give us a little bit of our CP that we're used to seeing when you start talking about your costumes from back in the day, though. I'm always chill. I got the opportunity to go. Their set is dope. It's it looked like, really cool. Yeah, it's at a mansion. Like they they just rent out a mansion, and you know you got the backyard, you got the pool, you got the barbecue grills. Like so, they could do whatever they want. It's like sitting in the living room. They emptied out all the furniture and made it a set. So it's actually a dope dope setting. And then uh, when we got down to Atlanta for Super Bowl. It was like, hey, bestie, <laughs> can you uh, come bless 26 minutes? And she did. So here's the interview uh, for me, Monica Jake. Appreciate you watching 26 Minutes, episode 25. Uh, we're so happy to be back in studio together. Uh, check out Christine Leahy and check us out next week, episode 26. We got to do something big. We'll something figure that out uh, in due time. But for now, peace out, everyone. 26 minutes have officially been blessed. We got. Are we on camera? Yeah. Okay, cool. You look good on camera. Thank you. <laughs> Introduce yourself to my fans. Uh, we got a my million name viewers. Is, you do? Yes. Amazing. Hi, million viewers. I'm Christy Leahy, uh, also known as the person. Woman that, that got yeah, me in trouble. I didn't do it. You said it. And listen, we didn't know that that was going to be the story that got picked up by everyone. I swear. You asked me a question. You knew the second he said that that was getting I, picked I, up. I, it's I totally your fault. I didn't know. <laughs> you. Honestly, okay, listen. Chelsea, Chelsea's right there. Chelsea is my Chelsea professor. has nothing yeah. to do with this. So, no, no, no. She does because, you know, she'll know if things are going to get picked up. And we just didn't know about any of this. And then the next day I woke up and I saw all of these outlets picked it up. I didn't know. And then you fist pumped. No, yes. I, you, I, yeah, I you actually gave you, Chelsea a I high five. Like, back. yeah, we did no, it. Because that's not the we point broke of news. 
<laughs> my show is not a news-breaking show. You know that. Yeah, it's it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. <a> <laughs> was Listen, you got to own that a little bit, right? How? Like, if you're saying that you're drinking Hennessy before games, you got to know that people are interested this in that. Hold on. Totally hold on. Up. You just said you didn't think it was going to be news, but now admitted that you did know it was going to be news. After you said it? You said I thought up. it was interesting. I did not set you up. Yes. No, I and didn't. I knew, I knew to end the lead up. When we sat down to start talking, <laughs> you were like, where are you just coming from? You just flew in from <laughs> Vegas, huh? I was like, yeah, I was That's in true. Vegas. I tried to go catch the fight. And he was like, well, uh, did you drink Hennessy before I, games? That is not true. Yes, that it is was. Not. Now, like, you know what you're have doing? Have you been drinking? Do you know what did you're you doing to Hennessy me? Did you drink Hennessy before games? What you're doing to me. Exposing the truth. Is, no. Is what a lot of athletes get mad at. You're taking things out of context, pushing things together, making a story that's not true. Because I came in and I was like, hello, it's great to meet you. Thanks for being here. Where'd you come from? And you're like, Vegas. And I said, oh, cool. So were you at there partying? Where'd you go? And you told me that you were having spa days in Vegas. I did. Which I was I actually. Still, I'm not quite sure, I believe. And nowhere in that conversation did Hennessy or drinking even come up. Obviously, it I was, was during honest the interview with in you. the B block. Obviously, no, no. <laughs> yeah, we started the interview no, off. No. Yes, we did. Are you mad at me? The I don't think you're mad at me. I can think I, I can I mediate so this mad really quick? Yeah, we're Please not. We're, let me cool. mediate this. He called me BFF really yesterday. I just want to put that up. Because we are BFF. We're BFF. Like, there's no. I was no. antagonizing you for fun because I love Clinton. <laughs> um, her recall of the story seems much clearer and more concise than yours. Well, oh. I've had you concussions. also control the narrative. <laughs> did you have Hennessy this morning? You, you, <laughs> what time this morning? <laughs> Does it count? Well, hey, this was a turn up, right? It's a party. Since since I woke up, did I have it, or before I went to sleep? <laughs> <I didn't have laughs> it. This morning. You also control your own narrative, and probably when asked, "Did you drink Hennessy before the game?" should have said, "No, I did not." No, you should have lied to her. No, don't lie. You could have admitted it. But can I tell you something? In all of the stuff that I've been, because I've read all the articles that came out, people aren't knocking you for it. At all. Well, they should knock me, considering all the stories that we've heard. Like, you've had people be arrested before. You've had people do real drugs before. I just took a shot of Hennessy. Like, what was the most shot? you drank before a game? I've only two taken shots. One sh no, three. I, no, that's a good I question. even think you did it. Before. I don't think I did it. I do. I, really I think don't. you. I honestly think I've you never did had it before. A shot of Hennessy. Now that I think of it, what, tonight you will. <laughs> At sicko mode, you're definitely. I am going gonna, to Travis Scott. Sicko exactly, mode. you're definitely going to do a shot of Hennessy. <laughs> Were you mad when she broke the story? Were you mad when I it came out? I didn't break the story. I wasn't, I just when didn't she broke that massive news that I she just, knew about. I just didn't want to deal with it again. My life is so peaceful and calm. I had just left the spa. I was relaxed. <laughs> no, I was I know, detoxed. I, I was feeling good. I didn't set you up sudden, though. I never am setting anyone up. I hope you know that. Here, let me finish meeting. Um, you shouldn't have told her, and you knew it was going to be news. <laughs> no. Yes. If you want to come and back yes. on the show, we can do a real peaceful. Yeah, one. we're not doing like costumes. Meditation. Yes, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna, no costumes. Okay. No no alcohol questions. Okay, all right. Sure. This has to be really serious. This Very has serious. to be focused. Yes. This has okay. to be about going to the next level and me possibly working with you for a long time <laughs> because we're gonna, we're going to do a show together. <laughs> this is. I like our chemistry. Yeah, I do. I I, we have good chemistry, chemistry for TV. Well, you're, I, you're making it sound like it was bad. We had a good time. It, we it just had a came great out, that's time. what came out of the interview. We became BFFs. We are BFFs. And now, yeah, now we're lifelong partners. Yeah, and I'm starting to rethink. Maybe I should do a shot of Hennessy before I get I thought I we were events. partners. Well, I just oh, left. <laughs> you're, it's over. Now I'm getting sold <laughs> out for her. You can leave, all right? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you asked me to come here. Up. I don't want to break anything up. Well, no, it's over between me and you, Cool. <laughs> you can leave, all right? But thank you for joining 26 Minutes. Thank it you for having me. It was good to see you No problem. Thank you. Go find news somewhere. I will. Go break news. Yeah. No, I don't do that. Now, now <laughs> she's breaking I will. I will. Now Not she's breaking news. 26 <laughs> Minutes gave it to you first. She'll be breaking news from now on. Nope.